Greetings to you. Welcome to our live Word at Work Wednesday midweek service broadcast. Let us pray as get ready to hear what the Lord has planned for us for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are gracious. We thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us. We thank you for your word that is building us up. We thank you for your our provider. We thank you that our hearts and minds are open, ready to hear the word, ready to welcome the word, ready to understand the word, ready to do the word without delay, knowing fully well that you're more interested in our success than it could ever be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It is good to have you join us today again. And today is part six in the series, Holy Disruptors. This is part six. You don't want to miss any chapter in this, in this series. So if you have not watched any before, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. Um, the details are on the screen right now. And you can, um, you can um, go and catch up with other episodes. And uh, you stay in tune for the upcoming episodes. The title is Holy Disruptors. Holy Disruptors come up with innovations. Holy Disruptors come up with solutions. Holy Disruptors come up with answers to situations. Holy Disruptors advance the kingdom of God. They advance the kingdom of God. They go against the grain. They come with new things. And um, today we're dealing with one of the greatest Holy Disruptors in the Bible, that is the man of God, Elijah. Elijah. And I can't teach all of Elijah today, but we want to show you some aspects of Elijah that will help you, that fit in with this series as Holy Disruptor. And you also need to understand that whilst they are Holy Disruptors, they are also unholy disruptors who are agents of Satan. And um, in the times that we live in, we need more and more Holy Disruptors to to come to the fore, to be available, to be used by God. Hallelujah. So let's just go, there's a way of background. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 23. We're reading from 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 23. We are reading from the Amplified Bible Classic because you need to see the background that's behind it. It's written, In the 31st year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri began his reign of 12 years over Israel, he reigned six years in Tezah. So you see, Omri became king over Israel, and he reigned over Israel for 12 years. All right? Next verse. Verse 24. Omri bought the hill Samaria from Shema for two talents of silver. He built a city on the hill and fortified it and called it Samaria, Shemiron. After the owner of the hill, Shema, verse 25, notice here, verse 25. Remember, Omri is king of Israel. Verse 25 says, But Omri did evil in the eyes of the Lord, even worse than all who were before him. <laughs> now, that's not a good uh, testimony. You can see King Omri is an unholy disruptor. He's done more evil than the other kings that were before him. He's gone against God's agenda. It is a position of authority. Verse 26 tells us, He walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and in his sin, by which he made Israel sin to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger, with their idols. See, Jeroboam opened doors for Israel to worship idols. You know, when Jeroboam was king to worship what? Idols, went to idol worship. In other words, God made it clear in his commandments that you must worship God, him and him alone. So Jeroboam opened the door for Israel to worship idols. And you can see from that verse, very clear, said what? It said, um, uh, Omri did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Even the worst than all were before him, he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam. Now, this is terrible. I'm not teaching on Jeroboam today, but one day maybe I'll teach it. But you can study for yourself. Jeroboam was a king of Israel who lived in sin. 
he went against God's word. So scripture says, hang on, Omri lived in all the sinful ways of Jeroboam. <laughs> but he even did worse than Jeroboam. <laughs> Unholy disruptors. What a terrible testimony. And the, to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger with their idols. So the king is at the forefront of leading the people to go in the direction of idol worship. Ask yourself, what do you worship? Do you worship God? You say, Pastor, but I'm a Christian. What controls you every day? What controls you every day? Unholy disruptors are controlled by things that don't advance God's kingdom. You see, some people might think of idols as being is some doll that you make and you start worshipping. Yes, there are those that do those silly kind of things. Alright? But you might not... See, Satan deceives people. Anything that takes away your heart, okay, that dry, that controls you, such that you now are more driven by that thing, except instead of God's agenda, he has become an idol in your life. Your spouse can become your idol. There are some people who, whose only purpose for living is to please their spouse, even if it means going against God's word. There are some whose idols are their children, the child, you see, the needs of the child, even if those are needs against God's agenda. You see, I mean, all many times you hear people say, I live for my child. Don't live for your child, live for God. See, many single parents say, I live for my child. It's not, don't live for your child, live for God. God has blessed you with children. So if you live for God, he will show you the way and all the desires of your child will be taken care of. Whether you are married or not, even if you are a single parent, they will be taken care of. Some people live for the purpose of their business. Some people, without even knowing it, they live for the purpose of their pastor. I'm not saying go against pastors. Respect your pastor. Respect your man of God. Yes, as long as he's doing God's agenda, that which lines up with God's will. But some people, they will listen more to their pastor than they do to God. So you see here, you know, with um, Omri, Omri was the king of Israel. And, you know, before him, there was Jeroboam. And they were all evil. They opened doors for idol worship. And the people under them followed. Now, Scripture says Omri was what? Was king for 12 years over Israel. So for a period of 12 years, they were being led into idol worship deeper and deeper. That which was done by Jeroboam before Omri has upgraded the level of wickedness. Unholy disruptor Omri is indeed. Verse 27, 1 Kings 60 verse 27 says, the rest of the acts of Omri and his might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Let's go to the next verse. It's 28. So Omri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. Slept means Omri died. Slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. Ab, his son, reigned in his stead. So Omri is dead. His son Ab is taken over. Let's go to verse 29. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, began his reign of 22 years over Israel in Samaria. So, Omri was 12 years. His son, Ahab, 22. So, 22 plus 12, what does it give us? It gives us what? 34 years. So, this is 34 years. Israel under the reign of this same family. Let's go see what happens. Verse 30. The Bible says, And Ab, son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all before him. Now, notice here. Before Ab, it was written that his father, Omri, King Omri, did more evil than any other king of Israel. Now his son Ab is taken over. And he does even more evil than his daddy Omri. And upgrading evil. 
So, total of 34 years with just an upgrade of evil. God's agenda is not number one. Satan's agenda is number one. 34 years. Verse 31 says, As if it had been a light thing for Ahab to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, he took for a wife Jezebel, daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, and saved Baal and worshipped him. Notice, Jeroboam being used as a reference point. It was a light thing for Ab, just like his daddy, Omri, to walk in the sins, sinful life of, of Jeroboam, premised on idol worship. And what happens? <laughs> he marries Jezebel. Now, Jezebel is clear, is daughter of Ethbar, king of the Sidonians. So Ahab was unequally yoked. He was not supposed to marry Jezebel. <laughs> Light and darkness don't mix. So he was in Israel, he was not supposed to marry Jezebel. But he was in love. You see, he, his level of evil was upgraded, upgraded his father over his level of evil. See how they are passing on from one generation to the next. Evil. Evil. So you can imagine the lifestyle that the Israelites are having. They have completely switched from their God. They switched to idol worship. So he's married uh, Jezebel, daughter of Ethbar, king of the Sidonians, and saved Baal and worshipped them. So Jezebel is from the order of worshiping what? Baal. The false prophets. Idol worship. Verse 32. See what Ahab did. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see, Ahab's father, Omri, built the city Samaria and continued to further idol worship. His son, Ahab, He's married, unequally yoked. He's Israel, he shouldn't marry Jezebel. He's married, he's unequally yoked. And what does he do? He builds an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. So he shows you the influence of his wife Jezebel. Because they were in the worship of, of, of this false prophet, Baal. So he, because he married wrong, he upgraded his level of evil. So, Ab is another unholy disruptor. He made his Jezebel, another unholy disruptor. Two unholy disruptors together, powerful agents for advancing satanic agenda. They erect, a, a, they erect, a, <laughs> they erect a, an altar for worship of Baal. What a terrible thing. In Samaria, they no longer worship God. The true God. Verse 33. And Ab made an Asera a daughter a symbol of the goddess Asera. Ab, the Bible says, Ab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. What a testimony. The king is being used by Satan full time. 24-7. Why did Ab upgrade? Why did Ab, Ab upgrade such wickedness? He married wrong. Brothers and sisters, it matters who you marry. If you are single, follow God's plan in his word so that you marry the one that God has for you. So many people, you, you, if you don't have to debate about whether or not you're, 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 you're called to singleness or to get married. If you think one day you're going to get married, singles is not for you. So you don't have to pray about it. If you desire to get married one day, get it clear. Single is not for you. So get married to the right person. Hallelujah. Now, 
Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel before him. 34 years. <laughs> the children of Israel being led in the path that's ungodly. A path that of idol worship. When you worship idols, you will not prosper. Prosper, prosper. A good life cannot be based on idol worship. That is based on idol worship. It's a satanic agenda. It will not last. It will never give you the peace and joy and prosperity that God gives you. It is inferior. But many people are enjoying things that are of Satan. Verse 34. First Kings 16, verse 34. In his days, he of the Bethlehite, he built Jericho. He laid his foundations at the cost of the life of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Joshua, son of Nun. Now, let's go to First Kings chapter 17 now. It's written. First Kings chapter 17 from verse 1. Elijah the Tishbite of the temporary residence of Gilead said to Ab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be Jew or reign these years, but according to my word. Can you see the holy disruptor, Elijah? The wickedness in the land has been going on for so many years. Elijah stands up to it. Elijah, <laughs> he told Ahab direct, as long as the Lord of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no Jew or reign these years, but according to my word. Why was Elijah speaking these words? Elijah was saying there had been too much wickedness in the children of Israel. So he's speaking that there had been no reign. And he faces the number one agent that is being used by Satan to advance the idol worship that was alive at this time. That's the king himself, Ab, the husband of Jezebel. He faces up to him. Holy disruptors have courage to deal not with the symptoms, but to deal with the root of the problem. Holy disruptors have the courage, they have the boldness to deal with the root of the problem, not with the symptom. Deal with the root of the problem. Many are afraid, so they will deal with the symptoms. May the Holy Spirit guide you. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Meditate on God's word. Because if you don't deal with the root of the problem, you will not find the right solution. You won't find the right solution. Many families are going astray. Why? Because they're not dealing with the root problem. Many businesses can't prosper. Why? They're not dealing with the root problem. Many nations are not prospering. Why? Because they're not dealing with the root problem. Elijah, in the nation of Israel, he had no physical army, but he had the boldness, he had the courage to face the root of the problem. He faced Ahab direct, and he told him, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before my stand, there shall be no Jew or reign these years, but according to my word. Very important. Elijah trusted God. He spoke the words. He got to a point and says, no, this wickedness, this evil cannot be allowed to continue. It cannot be allowed to continue. He faced it. Verse 2 says, and the word of the Lord came to him saying, go from here and turn east and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, east of the Jordan. Verse 4, you shall drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Why must he go? God is taking him away from there because God knows that the anger of Ahab will be kindled against him and Ahab would want him dead. There's now colliding forces. Forces of good and forces of evil. Ahab powered by forces of evil. Elijah powered by forces of good. Holy disruptors are interested in the good of people. They're interested in the advancement of the kingdom of God. So God gives Elijah, I would say, Elijah, go from here and turn east. 
and hide yourself. This is clear. Hide yourself. Because Ahab would want him dead. Hide yourself. By the river of church, east of the Jordan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So notice here, God makes a way for Elijah to leave the presence of Ahab. But God also knows that Ahab and his cause want Elijah dead. And God tells Elijah exactly where he must go. Holy disruptors, God is specific because your heart is hungry for God's agenda to be advanced. God will make a way of escape for you in every situation. Put your trust in God. It doesn't matter what you face. You put your trust in God. And God tells Elijah, go to the brook challenge east of the Jordan. Verse 4. You shall drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Hallelujah. Can you see the working of God? There's a specific place that Elijah must go to. And God is going to provide for him. I, I mean, I've spoken this before. Look at this. Amazing. The ravens are to feed you there. <laughs> go to verse 5. It says, So he did according to the word of the Lord. He went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, east of the Jordan. He went to the right place at the right time and was doing the right things. He held on to God's word. Holy disruptors hold on to God's word to the letter. Holy disruptors do not dilute God's word. Holy disruptors do not change God's word. Holy disruptors hold on to every word that God speaks. Elijah has shown innovation. Before he said no rain, no one had ever spoken and said no rain. Elijah introduced the innovation of no rain to stop wickedness, to bring people's attention to God so they could turn away from their wickedness. Study your Bible. Before that, uh, Elijah said, no one has spoken to say, rain, there will be no rain here. It's the words he spoke. Innovation, holy disruptor, a history maker. If you're a holy disruptor, you will be a history maker. But it means you have to put your complete trust in God. And you also have to hear from God with clarity, without error. It means your spiritual antennas are raised. You are always in direct fellowship with God. You are always praying, you are always meditating on His Word. You are focused. God is number one in your life. You hear the voice of God with clarity. And when you hear it, you know it for yourself that this is God talking. Elijah knew it for himself that it was God talking. Tell him to the, go to the brook Cherith. And there's nothing that Ab and all his cause could do to kill Elijah because Elijah was hid in God. He was giving the protection of God. And he was following God's word to the letter. Even now, God has a word for you. Follow his word to the letter. God told us clearly 2020 is our year of perfection. It doesn't matter what's taking place in the world. 2020, for us under this case, is our year of perfection. And May is our month of opening. Many things have opened. We thank God here in South Africa. Just yesterday, the president allowed churches to open. Hallelujah. Churches to open. And to worship. And more importantly, <laughs> he, he also declared that place of worship and ministers are essential services. The deception of Satan, that it, through all the people that were saying there's the word, that churches and ministers are not essential services, has been, has been defeated. It has come crashing down. That wicked council. It's come crashing down. Last week, President Trump spoke. I, 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 it doesn't matter what you think about President Trump, but I'm just saying something that's quite important. He declared. That in America, that church is essential service. And he said, church must be allowed to meet and open. He went and had the boldness to say those words. And that was a sign from God for us in this world. That was a sign. God spoke to us clearly last week. That was a sign. That it has been a turnaround. That this coronavirus, the COVID-19 challenge, and whatever goes on, it has been, this thing is, this thing, this thing, that has been, that has been stopping our lives from going forward. Cannot win. That was a sign for us. Just like how Eli saw the hand, the size of him, saw a cloud, the size of a man's fist. That time when Elijah asked for there, not to be no, for there to be no 
rain. And um, when there was no rain, he wanted rain to, to come back. He then um, sent his servant to, 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 to go and check for rain. And six times seven went and there was no rain. But on the seventh time he came back and said, There's, I've seen a cloud the size of a man's fist in the, in the sea. And Elijah knew there was a sign. He said, rain is coming. So he's coming here. So we thank God for that sign. And we continue to pray for all presidents and prime ministers of all nations in this world that they will discount the wicked counsel that wants to go against God's agenda. The wicked counsel that wants to go against anything that is godly, that will not prevail. Well, let's come back to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 4. What tells Elijah? You shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the raisins to feed you there. The Bible says, verse 5, so he did according to the word of the Lord. He went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, east of the Jordan. Brothers and sisters, never be afraid. Follow God's word. It will give you direction. God's word is a compass. God's word is a spiritual, is a GPS to show you where to go. Elijah has been told where to go. Verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook. Can you see what's happening? He's following God's word. And I always like to say, the drone technology that's bringing food these days, are they learning from the Bible? Those were the first drones, hallelujah. The birds were the drones there. <laughs> so the birds are flying. They're bringing bread and flesh. That's meat. He needs it. They're bringing it fresh. Hallelujah. They're bringing fresh food, uncontaminated. Ask yourself, where did they pick up the bread? Where did they pick up the meat? Where did they get it? Ha ha! Holy disruptors, God is the source of your provision. Maybe God has given you an idea for business. God will open a way for you to get the capital needed. Put your trust in God. Declare 2020 is a year of perfection. There's a completion taking place in your life. Great testimonies shall be spoken of God's goodness in your life. It's not over. No, 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 no. We are soaring. Month of May is month of opening. Hallelujah. In the year of perfection, there are opportunities open for you. And you are big enough for them. Put your trust in God. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt yourself. Don't say, I'm not qualified, or I'm underqualified, or I'm not tall enough, I'm not short enough. Although it doesn't matter. God is open doors right now for you in this month of opening. You see there, God opened a door, a challenge for Elijah to be provided with food by ravens. It had never happened before. I see them flying in. And they've got instructions to bring that food and that bread to a, to Elijah. It was for Elijah only. See how specific God is. The fact that you are, you are watching this live broadcast right now, God has a plan for you. He has ideas for you. He has strategies for you. He has innovation for you. He's got answers for you. If you can tune in, he's talking to you even right now as I'm speaking. You're seeing visions of the Spirit, getting answers of the Spirit, getting impartations of grace, getting ministration right now for the Holy Spirit. Verse 7. After a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came to him, that's Elijah. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So, the food supply here has ended. But God is mindful of Elijah. He tells him where to go to next. Hallelujah. He tells him where to go to next. He tells him where to go. He tells him who to meet. God is mindful of you. Verse 10 says, So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to get of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Verse, 4, verse 11, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Verse 12, And she said, as the Lord your God lives, 
I have not a loaf baked, but only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the bottle. See, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and bake it for me and my son that may, we may eat it and die. Notice, the Lord guided him to the widow. The widow is at a play point of death. There is famine. They have only got one more meal to go, she and her son. That's all they have. You see, God's planning. God, didn't, God simply said, go to meet a widow. He didn't tell her she's at the point of death. You see, holy disruptors, you move according to God's word. And you do what God tells you to do. Now, she says, okay, this is all we have. After this, we die. Verse 13, Elijah said to her, fear not. Go and do as you have said. But make me a little cake of it first and bring it to me. And afterwards, prepare some for yourself and your son. <laughs> he says, fear not. See, holy disciples have no fear. Up to this point, Elijah has no fear. He has no fear to, I mean, someone say he's being cruel. How can he ask a, a widow who's not got enough food to eat for her and her son? God told him, you will meet a widow that's going to provide for you. So he didn't look at her being a widow. He didn't look at her having only enough to for food for her and her son. He didn't look at her natural ability, at her physical ability. Elijah was guided by spiritual ability, the power of the Holy Ghost. He looked at this woman as being the right person that God had put in his path for his provision of the meal that he needed. Because God swore and said it, this woman had the capacity. The ability is in the instruction of God. The ability is in God's word. Don't doubt God's word. Don't doubt God's instruction. You should shout it right now. 2020 is your year of perfection. Your marriage is perfected. Your business is perfected. Your children are perfected. Your, things are working out together for good. This, will be the, this is the best year of your life. You will testify of God's goodness. This year. This year, this will be the best year of your life ever. This year, don't stop talking it. Stick to God's word. You will come back with the testimony. See what happens. Verse 14. Says, For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal shall not waste away or the bottle of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. Verse 15, she did as Elijah said. And she and he and the household ate for many days. Verse 16, the jar of meal was not spent, nor the bottle of oil failed, according to the word which the Lord spoke through Elijah. You can read the voice of the rest of the chapter. You'll be mightily blessed. Now with that background, let us now Switch to First Kings, verse eighteen. Or First Kings, verse eighteen, verse one. See, Elijah is holding something. He follows God's word. Verse eighteen, First Kings, chapter eight, verse one. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying. Go and show yourself to Ahab, and I'll send rain upon the earth. He's been instructed, go and show yourself to Ahab. The king wants to kill him. The king wants him dead. God says, go and show yourself to him. And I will send rain upon the earth. See, God knows the appointed time. Yes, Elijah called for there not to be no rain. But God knows it's time for rain to come now. He says, Elijah, go now. Go and show yourself to the king. I will send rain upon the earth. Elijah doesn't say, hang on, you asked me to come and hide at the brook Cher Cherith, right? He doesn't say that. Now you want me to go back to the person who wants to kill me. He doesn't say that. All that Elijah is interested in is doing what God's word tells him to do. Where God says go, he goes. Where God says don't go, he doesn't go. What God's word says do, you must do. Refuse to fear. Refuse to give in. 
to anything that goes against God's word. Verse 2. So Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Verse 3. And Ahab called Obadiah, who was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. <laughs> Verse 4. For when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Notice. Jezebel, King Ab's wife, the one is equally yoked with. She, can you see? She got the Christian men of God to be killed. She got the Christian prophets to be killed. She got them to be killed. Why? Because she was an idol worshiper. Why? She had convinced her husband able to uh, able worship her as well. So, can you imagine? So, the time when you see Christians being persecuted, there's always been persecuted. Those that believe in God have always been persecuted. But there's a way of escape for us. But look at this here. Jezebel, the wrong woman he married. He was unequally yoked. King Ab married the wrong woman. And she killed a hundred prophets of God. But Obadiah, who was working in King Ahab's house, he put his, line, his life on the line. So Obadiah is a holy disruptor. He put his life on the line. He hid 100 prophets of the Lord. He put them in two groups of 50-50. Hid them in caves. And he fed them with the bread and water. Now, that's what a very exciting meal combination is. He fed them with bread and water. Verse 5, And Ab said to Obadiah, Go into the land to all the fountains of water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, that we may lose none of the beasts. Say, Ab doesn't want his beasts dead. Verse 6, So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ab went one way, and Obadiah went another way, each by himself. Verse 7, As Obadiah was on the way, behold, Elijah met him. He recognized him, and fell on his face and said, Are you my Lord Elijah? He recognized God's God working Elijah. Verse 8. He answered him, It is I. Go and tell your Lord. Behold, Elijah is here. Verse 9. And he said, That's Obadiah. He said, What sin have I committed? That you deliver me, your servant, into the hands of Ahab to be slain. So you see, Obadiah believed in Elijah. He believed in God. Even though he's working for Ahab, he says, I'm your servant, Elijah. You are the man of God. I am your servant. Obadiah is saying, I'm here to advance your, 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 your vision that God has given you. But he says, you want me to go and tell Ahab that you are here? I will be slain. Why? You want me to be killed? Verse 10. Elijah said, as the Lord God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they had not found you. And verse 11, and now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. He's saying, hang on, Ab is looking for you in all the nations. He has failed to find you. Now you want me to go and tell him you are here. Verse 12 says, as soon as I have gone out from you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you. I know not where. So when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared and revered the Lord from my, my, from my youth. Consistency. Open die. Hold this up. Consistency. You follow God's agenda. Verse 13. He says, Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifties in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. Verse 14. And now you say, go and tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he will kill me. He said, Ahab will kill me. Verse 15. Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself to Ahab today. He spoke the words. Notice verse 16. Ab, so Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Obadiah believed 
in the words of his man of God, Elijah. He went straight. He trusted him. The whole disruptor. We'll pick it up next week. It's amazing. I know you've gone through the story many times, but you've become in a different way by the grace of the Holy Spirit. As you're watching this program today, I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus is the Lord and Savior, I'd encourage you right now to repeat these words after me so that you get born again and if Jesus is Lord and Savior. Repeat after me. Say, from today, Jesus is the Lord, the boss of my life. He died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected. He lives in me now by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words, my brothers and sisters, you are born again. Please get in touch with us on the contact details that are on your screen right now. We would love to hear from you and also help you in this path and encourage you to keep connected to this live broadcast that we're having. And it's very important. When you're born again, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You now need to grow to spiritual maturity. You need to be planted in a sound doctrine church like Oasis Christian Assembly. If you've got no church, please get in touch. We'll help you. We can attend the nearest Oasis Christian Assembly branch next to you. You grow. It's important. Even in these times of of uh, lockdowns and all I said, you, there are opportunities for you. Get touch will help you so you can grow in the Lord. Hallelujah. Very important. I also like to take this opportunity to, to, to tell you about an upcoming program, powerful program. This coming Friday, 29th May, from 7 p.m. to, 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 to 8 p.m. online, we'll be in the marriage seminar we should be hosting. Watch this clip and be blessed. You need to be a part of it. I'm gonna fight for you. Nothing's ever gonna burn this down. I'm gonna fight for you. Will you fight for your marriage? We know that every marriage will experience some conflict along the way. That's right. Some are not talking right now because of unresolved conflict. Right. Some are estranged. Some even divorced because of unresolved conflict. Conflict is part and parcel of every marriage. It is inescapable. You cannot avoid it. The question is, when conflict comes, who should win? Should it be him because he's the head of the home? Should it be her because she's the queen of the home? Absolutely not. Best friendships are built out of people that have learned to overcome their differences and to resolve all conflict. Similarly, best marriages between a husband and a wife are built when they've learned to overcome their differences and to resolve all conflict between them. We are hosting an online special session on how to resolve conflict in marriage. On Friday, 29 May, the time is 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. GMT plus 2. And the connect details are now showing on your screen. Make sure you connect on Friday. Together, let us build marriages that last. If we keep God here at the center, there's nothing we can't get through. Wow. Don't miss this many seminar. We're going to have a wonderful time. Be a part of it. And it's getting ready to close our service right now. I encourage you to join us um, right now You know, you know, uh, as we help to, to meet the needs of many other people. We encourage you to partner with us financially. I encourage you to give your offerings every time you're in service like you are in right now. Even though you're online. Give your offering, give your seed, give your tithe. It's very important. It's what the Bible commands us to do. So thank you all who are partnering with us financially. And I say, God, may God's grace is working in your life be increased. You are doing a great job. We also want to let you be aware that there are many people who've got no food. And we make arrangements to help those that we can. You can contribute to our compassion fund. The details are showing on your screen right now of the bank to put for our compassion fund and also earlier you saw the details of our of the bank accounts for you to put in your tithes your offerings and your seeds you can also do it online as well you can give them all there's an online online um, facility for you with the link that's showing on your screen right now for you to give your offerings 
It's very important. Give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's what the Compassion Fund, we have many people that need food every day. No giving is too small or too big. The bank account details are on the screen as well. Please contribute. We are thankful for your heart of love. Thank you so much. And also every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have the Boss of Wisdom Live Tennis broadcast on the same links we are watching this program. You'll be mightily blessed. And our current series right now, um, uh, we're, doing, we're doing series, Make Good Things Happen. You don't want to miss out. Don't miss this Sunday service. Sunday, 31st May, we will be having a wonderful online service. It will be part two in the series, Be Prepared. We had a wonderful time last week, Sunday. Don't miss this coming Sunday. It will be from, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. That is GMT plus two, Sunday 31st May. On the link showing on your screens right now. It's a time for change. It's a time for promotion. It's a time for progress. It's a time for more grace. Join us on Sunday. God bless you. Make good things happen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Let us share the grace as we get ready to feel safe right now. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely, goodness and mercy are our portion all days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.